Hello, my dears. How are you all? So, I think in the last class we discussed the uh, concept of what? In the last class we studied about the um, some problem we discussed, right? Some problems we discussed and characteristics, yes, very well. Especially the characteristics of DC generator we discussed, right? DC generator we discussed. Those characteristics are very, very important, my dears. So, please just go through that, okay? Just go through that, the shapes of the curve and all. Okay, you may go through that and it will definitely helpful to you. Okay, so now today we are going to deal with DC motors. DT, DC motors. So in DC motor, what we are going, what we are doing in DC motor, this is DC motor. So we are giving electrical input, correct? Electrical input. That too, DC in nature, correct? That is DC in nature. DC electrical input that we are being, we given to the DC motor. And this, this DC motor will give the, the mechanical output. Am I correct? Mechanical output. Simply, the conversion of electrical energy to mechanical energy is called the motor, correct? So this is called the DC motor. And what is the working of, working principle of that DC motor? Let's discuss that. See, I will, I am going to draw a rough figure, okay, rough figure. Suppose this is the north and south pole, this is two pole DC motor, you imagine. Here it is nothing but the armatures, correct? Here it is nothing but my dear, the armatures. And in which, the armature in which there are armature conductors, am I correct? Armature conductors are connected, correct? Armature conductors are there in the armature. And it's continuously fluxes are flowing from north pole to south pole, that means there is a link of what flux always with the armature conductor because it is a, a temporary magnet so whenever you excited this magnet with some field excitation that means definitely there will be field now definitely there will be some field so if you excite this field with some uh, external dc source then definitely it will be temporarily magnetized and this field pole will continuously what uh, pull some uh, magnetic field from north to south pole okay so what we are going to do in DC motor is that here is the armature ends. So there are two ends of the armature conductors after all the winding done. Okay. So there will be two ends now. So in these two ends, we are going to supply a DC volt. DC supply. So what happened? Due to the presence of this commutator, the commutator is there now. Commutator is there. There, there is the commutator. So due to the presence of commutator, even though if you apply the DC, inside the generator inside the generator sorry inside the motor the supply will convert into dc to ac that means inside this armature conductor medias there are ac currents flowing there are ac current flowing it is reverse that of the dc generator okay i already explained the concept of dc generator where we gave the uh, what uh, where, where the generated emf is ac in nature but due to the presence of commutator the output will be dc so similarly we are giving dc supply to the terminals of the armature to the terminals of the armature and inside the armature due to the presence of the commutator segment the currents which is flowing inside the armature will be alternating in nature okay so what happened my dear what happened it suppose a conductor of length l conductor of length l is situating in a magnetic field of flux density B and due to that I mean uh, there is a flow of current in the conductor of I there is a flow of I current in the conductor that means if a conductor is of length L uh, in situated in a flux density produced by the temporary I mean temporary magnet B carries a current I carries a current I then inside that conductor or in that conductor there will be a force that force is nothing but my dear B I L exactly it is B A L sin theta Newton where theta is the angle between what the movement of the conductor and the magnetic field that is the theta okay so there will be some force existing in between the conductor conductors so the effective force will try to rotate this armature conductor because the forces are arranged in such a manner that it will make a rotating effect it will make a rotating effect in the armature conductor so eventually this due to the force due to the force 
what happened or you can say for uh, torque there will be a torque also torque t torque is equal to na b i sin theta this also you can explain newton meter right newton meter this is just newton because it's false and there is a torque what is that na b i where n is the number of conductors and a is the area of cross section of the conductor and b is the flux density and i is the current bus so torque is nothing but my, my dear turning effect of force what is the difference between torque and force suppose the force is measured or the linear in linear dimension it is called the force suppose you convert it into rotational rotational it is called the torque so rotational effect of force is called the torque what my dear rotational effect of force is called the torque so the force required to turn or rotation is simply called the torque so this torque will be generated that torque will be na bi sin theta so due to this torque the armature will try to what rotate that is the basic principle simple principle of simplest manner explanation of what dc motor working dc motor working right? okay next you have to introduce one term back came off it is very very important in case of dc motor back end see my dears see what happened you applied a dc supply externally and inside there will be an ac current which is flowing if there is an ac current in the conductor flows what happen there will be an alternating magnetic field surrounding the conductor correct there will be there will be the production of what an alternating magnetic field around the conductors so here also here also around these armature conductors now so there will be a magnetic field that magnetic field is continuously changing in nature because the inside current is sinusoidal it is varying it is time varying so that magnetic field also what continuously changing that magnetic field also continuously change so now this rotor conductors are situates situates in a time varying magnetic field around them correct a time varying magnetic field around them am i correct see suppose i am a conductor you imagine i am a conductor my dear i am the armature conductor okay i am the armature conductor suppose a current is flowing through me what happen around me there will be a magnetic field so i can see myself in different manner as there is a flow of current okay okay i forgot that there is a current inside me and there is a magnetic field okay and now i am sitting in a time very magnetic field around me am i correct now i am sitting as a time very magnetic field around me so due to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction what happens my dear there will be a flow of or there will be an induced emf inside me correct because i am sitting or i am standing around the or i am standing inside the time very magnetic field around me am i correct time very magnetic field around me so what happen if a conductor situates in a time very magnetic field there will be an induced emf due to faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so inside this what conductors there will be what my dear an induced emf and due to lenses law due to lenses law the induced emf on me has the tendency to opposes the reason for that am i correct it will opposes the reason for that here the oppose the here the reason is that my dear the applied voltage itself because that applied voltage is the reason for the current which is flowing in the conductor now so due to that current only magnetic field will produce right due to that magnetic field only current will be emf will be generated on me now so what happened the primary reason for the production of induced emf in the conductor of motor my dear not generator of motor is nothing but the applied voltage so that back emf will always i mean it's okay so that emf is called the back emf that induced emf is called the back emf and it is represented by back emf it is represented by a letter eb it is represented by a letter eb and its value is nothing but my dear same phi z n by 60 into p by a volts volts same eg you know eg value same as eb value and this back emf will always opposes the very cause or opposes the reason for the production here the reason is nothing but v the voltage v so eb will always 
oppose V, where V is nothing but the applied voltage. V is nothing but the applied voltage. Is it clear? So always EB will be less than V. It is very very important. For motor, the value of EB will be less. EB will be less. I will explain why this is. So the equivalent circuit. Let's go to the motor equivalent circuit. So what will be the terminal voltage equation here? We applied a voltage of V here now. V here now. So we applied a voltage of V. Due to that there is a current I. That current is flowing through this resistance R. Okay. So I can write like V minus I into R equal to EB. Where, where R equal to RC plus RA for series motor and R equal to simply RA for shunned motor. Am I correct my dear? For series motor there will be this RA is actually the summation of RC series field winding plus the R major resistance. So that is the reason why RC plus RA. So this is the terminal voltage equation. Very very important my dear. V minus I into R equal to EB. So by simply looking at this equation, we can found that EB is always less than V plus EB is always less than B. That's all. EB is always what my dear? Less than B. Am I correct? Is it clear? Is it clear? So that is the equivalent circuit of the uh, DC motor. Okay. If you have pressure drops, they are specifically return a brush drop then you can v minus i minus ir minus brush drop equal to ev that also you can write okay that's it. if the question demands only you can write that is it clear so that is the principle of dc motor and uh, back emf okay is it clear Our command session are not active actually. Oh. See my dear, this is this the command session is for yours only. Yours for yours only. Okay. So if you have you can, you, you can discuss something, you can share your knowledge, you can no uh, if you if you have a simpler explanation than me if for any topic, subtopics, then you can also but comment in your comment session. See while seeing that comment session now. One one thing is that we it is an indication of we are alive, right? We are alive. Suppose you are something right in the comment session, it's an indication of we are alive and active. We are continuously focusing. Okay, that is the first thing. Second thing is that by reading that comments now, knowledge will be shared, right? Knowledge will be shared. But someone is there or no, it's actually why I I already told you why I have chosen the language English is that even though i am not very fluent in english why i i have chosen this language english means i have to spread my knowledge to all over the india all over india not all everywhere because english is that type of language no everyone can understand so even though i am not strong in english i take it as a risk i know that i take it as a challenge because i have to spread my knowledge to everyone Okay, so suppose you something you write in the comment session, it will be seen by all. It will be seen by all. So their knowledge also improved, right? Their knowledge also improved. So that is the meaning. That is the reason why I I am telling you, please comment something in the comment session. Not not related to, I mean something related to our subject. Okay, not related to uh, not than our subject. Okay, something related to our subject you can comment. Oh, your idea okay everything you can comment okay next you can um, 
torque equation very very important one yes torque equation dc motor torque equation okay dc motor torque equation in generator na emf equation in torque it is in motor it is torque equation see <coughs> पवर लेवल इन दि आर्मेचर ईक्वल टू इबी इन टू ई लट बी सीरियस मोटर यू कंसिडर सी सिंप्ली लट बी ई ए आर्मेचर करंट इट ईज इबी इन टू नॉट सीरियस एनी मोटर यू कैन टेक दैट इबी इन टू ई करेक्ट that is nothing but eb is the generated voltage inside the armature my dear so that voltage into that particular current will be the generated power am i correct generated power okay so eb into i will be the power developed in the armature am i correct so this much watts correct this much watts this much watts okay and armature torque will be what my dear armature torque ta will be equal to what is the relationship between torque and power and freak i mean angular velocity it is simply pa by omega correct suppose this is pa this is pa my dear power developed in the armature will be pa and armature torque will be ta will pa by omega okay so it is nothing but my dear eb into ia divided by omega is nothing but 2 pi n by 60 So again, E B is nothing but phi z n by 16 into P by A into I A into 16 divided by 2 pi n. Am I correct, my dear? Am I correct? So this n and n got cancel. The 16 and 16 got cancel. So it will become phi z P I A divided by 2 pi a. So this is nothing but the developed torque equation in the DC machine, DC motor. Phi is the PIA divided by two pi into a, where phi is the flux per pole, Z is the total number of conductor, P is the what number of poles, IA is the armature current, two pi is constant, A is the parallel path. You all know, you all know this, correct? So that is the equation for what torque. And here, my dears, you have to note one thing. Here. Phi is see the number of poles is a constant, correct? Two pi is a constant, a is a constant. Am I correct? Z is the total number of conductor that also constant. So only variable here is nothing but my dear phi into i. So torque is proportional to phi into i. I a. This is very very important relation, my dear. This is very very important relation for solving problems and for understanding some concept. This equation will really help you. Okay, so the developed torque in the armature of a DC motor is directly proportional to phi into I A bus. Okay, that is the torque equation. That is the torque equation. Next, you have to see <coughs> different types of DC motor. Types of different types of DC motor. So T proportional to phi into I A. You have to remember. It's very very important. types of dc generator types in which first we have to see separately excited dc motor okay this dc motor separately excited dc motor <coughs> so this is the separately excited dc generator my dear that means like in dc uh, sorry dc motor okay likewise in dc generator separately excited means simply we exchange the power flow that's all 
the difference between motor and the generator is nothing but simply we have to exchange the power flow then it will motor will work as a generator and generator will work as a motor vice versa no issues there so the construction and working working is actually the opposite correct the construction is same for motor and generator the construction is same so how what is the separately excited dc motor let's see that by using an external supply we have to energize the magnetic field right because we have we need a separate permanent po temporary poles now so we have to create that poles so that we have to supply some armature sorry field flux so that field current is if due to that there will be field flux our magnets will be energized alternatively north south north south pole will be created okay for the motoring purpose or motor operation simply that magnet is not enough right there should be a current carrying conductor now so this is provided the current carrying conductor this provide the current carrying conductor what is that there is a applied voltage v due to that there is a current i you know all these right you know all this so what is the terminal voltage equation my dear v minus i a r i okay v minus i a r i equal to a b correct equal to a b so power developed will be equal to e b into i a correct and torque will be simply torque developed will be equal to E B into I A divided by omega, correct? E B into I A divided by omega. That's all. So that's simply you can write this equation, bus. Okay. And <coughs> power developed in the sense mechanical power developed. Okay. And losses will be what? Armature losses will be equal to I A square R. Am I correct, my dear? I A square R. Or I can say that P input minus losses will be equal to p mechanical correct or mechanical power developed okay so p input is nothing but my dear v into i a minus losses simply there are there are actually simple here it is only one losses that is nothing but <coughs> i a square r a this r a you can simply like it as r only my dear r only okay r only because it's a series machine means there will be the series field winding plus the armature winding so it is very uh, better to explain with this r only okay. so i a square r so v into i a minus what my dear losses will be i i square i a square into r correct i a square into r will be p mechanical that is nothing but e b into that's all that's all so just you have to write the equation whenever this is necessary in any problem and all no in problem and all it's very useful so according to that you can adjust the re rearrange the equation you can play with this equation in my words you can play with the equation that's all is it clear my dears is it clear so that is the separately excited dc okay next uh, the, there will be a super question there will be a super question my dear the question is that the value of eb will be max when maximum when a half load b full load c no load and d none of the yeah. what is your answer what is your answer the value of the eb will be maximum when what at, at what condition half load condition full load condition or no load condition or none of them the answer is no load condition why because only in no load see this equation or any equation or any equation you can see the value of the c v minus i a into r correct v minus i a into r or simply v minus i into r will be equal to what my dear will be equal to what e b correct will be equal to e b if load increases what happened my dear i will be increases correct if load increases i will increases so e b will what my dear decrease if this will increase means this will increase means the factor v minus i into r i into r increase means what E B will be decrease, correct? So E B will be increased when only I will be very, very, very low. 
the i will be very 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 low is only happens in no load condition my dear because i will explain the difference between generator and motor in terms of the load current okay in terms of generator suppose the load is increasing means the output current will be increases load is increasing means the output current will be increases in the case of motor the load is increasing means in electrical term, i mean in generator the load is increasing means the electrical load no you connected suppose it's simply a resistor no the electrical load you continuously increasing so that more current that load can absorb so that the generator has to push more current so the load current will be high in terms of generator in case of motor my dear in case of motor the increasing load means no the motor is continuously rotating now the motor is continuously rotating correct the armature is continuously evolving revolving so something which is hindering this motion is called the load in terms of motor am i correct correct something which hinder hinder means simply block or disturb or block the smooth running of the motor is called the load so what happen means if load increases means in the shaft no this is the shaft you are tightening something that is called the load in the motor you are tightening something means that the armature feel difficulty to rotate right the armature feel difficulty to rotate that is called the load in terms of motor so what happen in order to move or it has to rotate of course na so in order to rotate or move what ha what will, what happen the armature will absorb more and more power and strengthen its magnetic field in order to overcome that hindrance or that blockage and it, it has to continuously move forward so for that forward moving for that forward moving the armature absorbs so many current from the load i mean from the line so that is called the load okay so load in the case of motor is nothing but the load current in the case of generator it is external load current correct the current absorbing power capability is called the motor load the current delivering capability of the generator is called the generator load okay simple that's all. so what happened come back to our question what happened my dear the eb will be minimum the eb will be less na we have to ask what is the eb will be maximum na maximum so at maximum for maximum eb this i into r will be nearly equal to zero for i into r will be nearly equal to zero happens only at no load condition the machine is smoothly running without any hindrances that is called the no load condition so that will only happens when no load suppose the value of eb will be minimum what 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 will you say minimum eb will be minimum at a full load condition at a full load condition at full load condition my dears did you get did you get did you get what i am going to say hmm okay next my dear my dear series motor so what is the circle equivalent circuit for t series motor it's very easy here you can confidently say ia no because armature current is same as the load current na so you can confidently say so this is a external dc supply so the equation will become v minus ia into r equal to eb where r will be equal to what my dear ra plus rsa correct ra plus rsa so what is the power developed power developed eb into i am i correct eb into i so torque developed will be eb into i divided by omega okay and what are the losses here i a square into r am i correct i a square into r it is called a copper loss
for copper losses simply copper losses so what will be the uh, p out p input minus losses am i correct so what is p input my dear v into ia losses will be nothing but i s square into r so that is the p out that is called the p out okay p out or simply p developed okay it is also called p developed called p developed now this equation need not to remember all the time you just remember this diagram only my dears whenever the demand is there you can rearrange the equation and all, you can write no need to uh, by heart completely in this order and okay no need to by heart this you have to just think and you have to write the corresponding equation whenever it is needed okay so that's a series motor equation next series motor characteristics series motor characteristics we have the armature torque torque is by toy is directly proportional to toy is ta is directly proportional to phi into i for series motor my dear for series motor phi will be directly proportional to what ia am i correct because it's seriously connected now so series field flux will be directly proportional to the series current ia so for so that torque will be directly proportional to ia square am i correct torque will be directly proportional to ia square for series motor series motor okay so what will be the curve or torque versus armature current curve this is ia and this is ta the curve will be like this parabola and after that linear this point is called saturation so linear means ta proportional to ia and this is means ta proportional to ia this will be the nature of the graph okay this is called the saturation point my dear saturation point you know this no need to explain and all because under certain condition up to saturation the torque will be directly proportional to phi into ia so that ia square will happen after some time after some time the saturation attained that means no more flux can be added to the what armature cores because the armature core is already saturated even if you add some flux the flux in the armature is remain constant i the flux will say the armature flux will say are don't but don't waste your energy i i don't want that i am a constant i am a constant flux so it phi will be constant if phi will be constant simply ta proportional to ia because it is constant so ta proportional to ia so the graph will be simply linear bus so the graph will be simply linear that's all my dear that's all okay and what will be the speed versus torque graph speed versus torque graph what will be the speed versus torque graph how can we write that equation for that for that we need another equation i will tell you that first then only this graph can be solved we have my dear eb that is nothing but the back end of in the motor is directly proportional to n into phi am i correct because everything except that will be constant i will write from the beginning so that it will be easily understood the back end of equation in the dc motor is nothing but phi z n by 16 into p by am i correct p is a constant a is a constant 60 is a constant my dear z is a constant so you can write like p b e b proportional to phi into n or n proportional to <coughs> e b by phi am i correct my dear n proportional to e b by phi okay 
and <coughs> then proportional to what is eb v minus i into r i simply i into r my dear maybe any motor na series motor for series motor is very easy so i a into r i divided by 5 divided by 5 so i can say that <coughs> n will be inversely proportional to i a then will be inversely proportional to i a and it is inversely proportional to <coughs> phi and is inversely proportional to <coughs> suppose it is inversely proportional to phi means t proportional to phi into i a na so n will be again this proportional to 1 by t a because torque will be proportional to phi into i a na so it will be proportional to again t a and <coughs> uh, that's all right n will be proportional to 1 by i a 1 by i <laughs> suppose it's 1 by i a means i can also write that 1 by i l na because i a and i l are same in series connection no so i a and i l are same again it will be equal 1 by i a c that is a series field current no everything if you, you just need i a okay <coughs> i l is automatically come i a c is automatic because all are connected in series right so this is the basic equation of the graphs of the graphs see the equation my dear so what is the connection between n and torque it is inversely proportional amma <coughs> so it is inversely proportional it is inversely proportional and what is the graph between what is the graph between what is the graph between n and il or simply ia n and ia what is the graph between n and ia it is also inversely proportional was <coughs> it's also inversely proportional is it clear my dear is it clear that's all so next applications dc series motor applications so applications means since it is having very high starting torque my dear dc mm, motor is always having very high starting very high starting torque because because this phi na phi it is not constant it is varying with respect to the what it is varying with respect to the armature current so since the phi is not constant the torque is also not constant so it having the highest starting torque that means under very low speed or very loaded condition or very high load you applied very high load you applied on a dc series motor what happen what happen my dear very high load you applied in the series motor this n will be very very low that means very high load you applied means you are trying to block the rotor you are trying to block the rotor of a dc series motor so you are trying to block the dc series motor when n will be very low n will be very low means t a will be very high this is only happening in dc series motor because dc shunt motor na my dears this is almost constant speed motor but the series dc series motor na it is not a constant speed motor its its speed can be very from very zero to very rated value you can vary that speed so due to high starting torque it is used in traction in traction you know this meaning of traction na you know the meaning of traction <coughs> okay <coughs> so that's all about the dc series motor so high starting torque is the peculiarity of a dc series motor my dear and <coughs> one more thing you have to note here very 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 important my dear this series motor na this series motor never runs in never runs no load it's very very important it's very very important never runs in no load speed no load condition why the series motor dc series motor never runs in no load condition why if the condition is no load means my dear the current absorbed by the motor will be very very low 
very very low because there is nothing to hinder the rotation now so the current will be very very low if the current armature current is very very low means see the equation ia means very very low means what happen n n will be very high am i correct am i correct so what happened my dear ia is very low means n will be very high so the machine will run if you run the machine for no load condition the speed of the machine will be very dangerously increased very much dangerously increased it will shatter the whole system it will burst that means the bolt in a bolt the fixed the bolt in the dc motor is fixed by a bolt in a bolt in the concrete structure that concrete structure and bolt will be suddenly burst burst in sense it will break and shatter away it will break break and shatter away that type of dangerous things will be happen so never run dc series motor under no load condition i know this is already you we have done in your exam lab laboratory examination and all laboratory experiment never the motor will always run at certain load for that there will be always some pulley na pulley there is always some pulley structure connected in the shaft across the shaft in order to apply some load all the time you see whenever you what releasing the load the speed will be increasing that is the main thing you have to note here that's the main thing you have to know. but in the case of dc shunt motor when you increase the load the load will be the speed will be what decreasing but in the case of dc motor when you increase in the load means the speed will be reduced if you decrease in the load means the speed will increase opposite manner opposite manner you have to think my dears you have to think and okay how to think okay so that's all mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it clear my dears? <clears throat> Is it clear? Next, DC shunt motor. DC shunt motor. Okay. that's all this is the dc shunt motor media so what will be the power input p input what will be p input p into il correct <clears throat> what will be p developed or p output eb into ia am i correct eb into ia so what are the losses here series loss ia square ra plus shunt loss ISH square into RSS. Am I correct? Two losses are here. Two copper losses are here. Across series winding, there will be loss IS square into RA. Across shunt winding, there will be loss IS square into RS plus. So I can say that P input minus losses will be equal to P output. Yes, that's all. P input minus losses will be equal to P output. That's all. Again, again, EB will be proportional to what, my dear? EN5. Am I correct? it will be proportional to n5 mm -hmm. okay not to into that let's go for torque equation directly no it is there the torque equation te will be proportional to phi into i am i correct in the dc series motor this phi is a constant correct phi is constant phi is constant shunt motor in a dc shunt motor phi is a constant so ta will be directly proportional to ia only it's very very important my dear it's very very important it will be proportional to ia only okay so you can write like ta proportional to ia which is proportional to 1 by na 1 by n correct 
Am I correct, my dear? Whenever we increasing the load current, the load current increases means, that means if you decreasing the speed means load is applied, so more armature current will be drawn. Okay, so N and I will be that much, uh, you, you can relate that. And <coughs> yes, N, TA proportional to IA proportional to 1 by plus. Just you have to remember this. What will be the graphs, corresponding graph? Torque versus IA graph. IA and torque so what will be the graph it's simply a straight line and speed versus torque graph sorry again TA and speed versus torque graph it will be what my dear inversely proportional graph it will be inversely proportional graph and speed versus IA graph Speed versus IA graph also it is inversely proportional. It is inversely proportional. What is actually the shape will be like this because this is after saturation. So this region is T proportional to IA. And this region is torque will be almost constant. It is called a constant. The graphs are very easy if you know the relationship. Okay. You have to think what happened, what happened, what happened. You have to imagine load increase means mechanical difficulties you will apply what happened at that time. Okay, that's all. Is it clear, my dear? Is it clear? <coughs> <coughs> write a question write a question the armature resistance of a the armature resistance of a 200 volt shunt motor is 0.4 ohm and no load current is <coughs> 2 ampere full stop when loaded when loaded taking taking an armature current of 50 ampere the speed is comma the speed is 1200 rpm Find the approximate no load speed. Okay. <clears throat> How can we start? Read the question carefully, my dear. Read the questions carefully. How can we start? How can we start, my dear? The armature resistance of 200 ohm shunt ohm is shunt generator is sorry shunt motor is 0.4 ohm. Okay, it's a shunt motor. It's given as it's a shunt motor. So can we draw a figure of that? The applied voltage, see the rating, the armature resistance of a 200 voltage shunt motor means the V you have to take as 200. The applied voltage, the rated voltage you have to take 200. 
this is armature resistance it is equal to 0 0.4 ohm eb rsh no load current is 2 ampere okay when loader is taking an armature current of 50 ampere the speed is 1200 rpm find the approximate no load speed <coughs> see my dear we can have for shunt motor for any motor not shunt motor for any dc motor eb proportional to n into 5 am i correct eb proportional to n into 5 for shunt motor for shunt especially for shunt eb this is for general motor this is eb proportional to n <coughs> For DC motor, EB proportional to N5. For shunt, <coughs> EB proportional to N. That means EB1 by EB2 equal to N1 by N2. For shunt only because phi is constant for shunt motor. So, <coughs> N1 is given. I mean the N2 is given, my dear. N2 is given. We have to find N1. Na. So, N1 will be equal to no load speed so n1 will be equal to eb1 by eb2 then that's all this is the equation you have to find so what is the value of eb1 and what is the value of eb2 that we have to find <coughs> okay what is eb1 no load back emf no load back emf Which is equal to my dear. So, no load back EMF is equal to. I can write like V minus IE into R. Am I correct? So, V is nothing but 200 volt. Correct? No load back EMF. Array back EMF it is what? V minus IE R is equal to EB now. So, 200 minus IE is given as no load current is what my dear? 2 ampere. 2 into R minus resistance is 0.4. So, 200 minus 0.4. 2 into 0.4 it is 0.8. Am I correct? So it will be 190. Correct? 199.2 volt. That is EB1. That is the EB1. And what is EB2, my dear? It is the loaded back EMF. Am I correct? Loaded back EMF. So it will be equal to again V minus IA RA. V is not changed 200 minus IA you change right for 550. RA, what is the value of RA? It is 0.4 AA. So it will be 200 minus I know Correct? So 190. Sorry, 200 minus. 5 into 0.4 is 2 and <coughs> 20 is 20. Okay, 5, 15 into 0.4 is 20. So, this is called EB2. So, now you have the value of EB1 and EB2. Simply substitute this equation number in this box of equation. So, that be equation number 1. So, substitute in equation number 1. What happened, my dear? N1 will be equal to EB1 by EB2. EB1 is what, my dear? 199.2 na. Into N2. N2 is given IP. That is 1200, correct? So the answer will you will be obtained as 1328 RP, my dear. That is nothing but the no load speed. So by observing the answer itself, you can conclude one, one thing already we concluded now. We can affirm one thing. No load speed is 1328. Loaded speed is what my dear? 1 to, one to double zero. So the, whenever we loading the machine, the speed will be reduced. That's all. That's all. Is it clear my dears? Is it clear? Can I wrap this?
नेक्स्ट कंडीशन फॉर मैक्सिमम डेवलप्ड पाल द कंडीशन इज दैट ई बी ईक्वल टू वी बै टू ईबी ईक्वल टू वी बै टू अंडर दिस कंडीशन ओनली मैक्सीम पवर विल बी जनरेटेड दैट देर इज अ प्रूफ ऐक्चुअली बट वी डोट वॉन्ट प्रूफ वी जस्ट नीड द इक्वेशन ओके सो वे दीसी मोटर डेवलप मैक्सीम पवर शंड मोटर वेदर शी सीरी मोटर एनी टाइप ऑफ डीसी मोटर मैडिय द कंडीशन इज ईवी सी गोल्ड वी बै टू वे द बैक इफ इज हाफ ऑफ दैट ऑफ दि अप्लाइड वोलटेज अट दैट पॉइंट ओनली दिट विल जनरेट मैक्सीम वे ऑफ मैक् सारी मैक्सीम पवर ओके कैन बी डो वन मोर क्वेश्चन कैन बी डू वन मोर क्वेश्चन एरियस right a question right a question in a dc motor a supply current then am i develop a torque of 100 newton meter when supply current is 20 ampere full stop okay full stop when when supply current is 20 ampere developed torque in series comma shunned <coughs> motor will be what a dc motor supply current of 10 ampere supply current means nothing but my dear let you can take it as il okay okay or uh, simply okay first we can focus on series motor that's better so series motor series motor you know this this is the diagram you know already know this ie equal to il so this is nothing but the voltage this is nothing but the ev and this is i okay so for series motor we know that my dear we know that um mm, we have to find developed torque in series and tandem motor now for series motor torque developed will be ta will be directly proportional to what my dear i a square am i correct ta directly proportional to i a square or i can say la ta1 by ta2 equal to i a1 by i a2 whole square am i correct my dear am i correct so what we have to find ta2 you have to find so ta2 by ta1 will be equal to आई ए टू बै ई ए वन दोल स्क्वेर और टी ए टू विल बी ईक्वल टू टी ए वन इंटू ई ए टू बै ई ए वन दोल स्क्वेर और ऐ कैन से लाइक टी ए टू विल बीक्वल टू वाट मेडिया टी ए टू विल बीक्वल टी ए वन इट इस गिवन आज हंड्रेड नोट मीटर इंटू ई ए टू इट इस गिवन आज ट्वेंटी टेन स्क्वेर हंड्रेड इंटू Four, four hundred newton meter is that yes. correct? See, it's already all data is given, my dear. Supply current is sub. When the supply current is twenty ampere, means this is twenty. The same as the armature current, no issues there. That is for series motor. Next for shunned, for shunned, for series, and next for shunned. So the shunned diagram will be what, my dear?
okay so what is the torque equation for shunned motor we already derived now so ta will be directly proportional to what ia only correct so <coughs> ta2 by ta1 equal to ia2 by ia1 or ta2 is equal to ta1 into ia2 by ia since the see the when the motor is supply is a 20 ampere current supply means this current is 20 ampere this is the load current the motor supply is a current of 20 ampere means two things you have to note here one is the shunt current is always a constant volume which is very small in magnitude so major of the portion of the load current will be absorbed by the armature itself in shunt as well as in series motor in series motor no need to think of it is already series connected now for shunt motor this ISH value will be very very low so that we can simply neglect that with respect to the load current so you can directly go for IA2 and IA1 as what 20 and 10 no issues there 20 and 10 no issues there correct okay <coughs> so it will be equal to 100 into 20 by 2 sorry 20 by 10 so it is simply 200 Newton meter that is the TA2. What is the TA2? So from the figure itself, you can clear one more thing. The, this problem itself, you can clear one more thing. The torque in the DC series motor is always very, very high than that of the shunt motor. Almost double for the same condition. No? For the same condition, the series motor can uh, deliver twice as that of the uh, torque as that of shunt motor. Yes. So that's all for today's session, my dear. So let's meet again with a new session on tomorrow. Okay, bye.